Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. If you're an international student at St Andrews and this is your first time here on the 5th of November, then you might wonder what the heck this day is, variably known as Bonfire or Guy Fox Night. We shoot off fireworks, mess around with sparklers and make bonfires, but this day, so close to Halloween, it's like an autumn boxing day, actually has a bizarre and complicated origin that shows how weird and dark Britain really is. 1605, the kingdoms of England and Scotland have one king, King James VI and I of Great Britain and Ireland. The Stuarts have ruled since 1603, but the kingdom is anything but stable. The reason is religion. The century of the Reformation that had just passed had been full of sectarian bloodshed. The Elizabethan religious settlement forced priests to swear allegiance to the Queen as head of the church or risk fines to execution. James I's succession provoked hope that its Catholic subjects would have a more tolerant reign. With peace between Spain and England finally made through the 1604 Treaty of London, the early signs were promising. These signs were misleading, however, with legislation against Catholicism continuing to persecute the faith. Plots began forming that aimed to change this, even if it meant treason. In the 1603 by kidnapping plot to the main plot which aimed to replace James with his relative Arabella Stuart. James's declaration in Parliament during 1604 that the Protestant faith was the true religion and that Catholicism had to be curbed, alongside a bill that suggested outlawing all Catholicism, led to the most serious plot of all. In the Duck and Drake Inn of the Strand in London, gentleman Robert Catsby led a meeting of other men on May 20th, 1604. Thomas Winter, John Wright, Thomas Percy and a soldier that Winter had found while trying to get Spanish support in the continent, a man named Guy Fox, met together. A plan formed in which they would blow up Parliament during the state opening in February 1605, killing James and the majority of the political elite, while other conspirators secured his daughter Elizabeth, who would be a puppet monarch. The rhyme doesn't go remember remember the 5th of February though. The opening was delayed and the group involved in the plot grew to include a man named Francis Dresham. James began overseeing the passage into law of fervently anti-Catholic legislation. By October 1605, the plot was planned in its entirety and they were ready. Fox would oversee assassinations by lighting the fuse under Parliament while his fellow plotters would lead a revolt in the Midlands. They were doomed days before the 5th of November though, when William Parker, 4th Baron of Monegle, sat down to dinner on October 26th before being handed an anonymous letter by a servant. It's believed to have come from his brother-in-law Tresham. It said, My Lord, out of the love I bear to some of your friends, I have a care of your preservation. Therefore I would advise you, as you tender your life, to devise some excuse to shift your attendance at this Parliament. The late comer Tresham thus doomed himself and his peers for believing he could warn a politician family member without consequences. When Eagle passed the information on to Cecil, the King's Secretary of State, who ensured that James knew by the 1st of November about what James called a stratagem of fire and powder. Late Monday night of the 4th, the undercroft near Parliament was searched. 36 barrels of gunpowder and a man named John Johnson were found. Took into custody, the identities of the plotter began being revealed by servants. Johnson's Roman resolution, as James called it, meant he was still unknown. That is, until James consented to him undergoing first gentler tortures, then worse. On the 7th, Johnson revealed himself to be Guy Fawkes. On the 30th and 31st of January 1606, the majority of the gunpowder plot conspirators were hanged, drawn and quartered before the building they had hoped to blow up. On the 31st, Fox managed to avoid the worst of his execution by jumping off the gallows and breaking his neck. The rest of the men had to experience their own quartering and disembowelment. So ended the story of Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot. Except it wasn't the end. While other countries celebrate their independence revolutions or the births and deaths of important cultural figures, Britain from January 1606 enshrined in law the observance of 5th of November Act, which would ensure yearly celebrations of the King Parliament's escape from Catholic revolt and assassination. A really weird basis for a holiday. Gunpowder Treason Day became a state holiday in which services, sermons, bonfires and even fireworks featured from early on. It would remain in law until 1859, and alongside laws like the Pope's Rescuance Act was part of two centuries in which Catholicism was not tolerated. The famous evidences put in the bonfires, for instance, were originally made to resemble the Pope and the Devil. The event had a patchy existence during the time of the Civil War Commonwealth and up to the Catholic monarch James II's reign, 
When William of Orange deposed James in 1688, having landed in Britain on the 5th of November, the event was bolstered by a new anti-Jacobite element. The 1700s and 1800s saw the event change again, turning from Gunpowder Treason Day into Guy Fawkes Night. A tradition of pushpenny or throwing money into crowds became a regular occurrence at Durham Cathedral on the 5th, and dark bonfire toffee became a popular treat. Increasingly, papers like the Times in 1790 reported children bearing stuffed effigies were begging for money for Guy Fawkes. These effigies took over from the Pope versions of earlier, and the ritual of children gathering bonfire items, money, food and drinks from neighbours became known as asking for a penny for the guy. Rhymes they would recite would become the one we know today. A 1742 example goes, Don't you remember the 5th of November? T'was gunpowder treason day. I let off my gun and made them all run and stole all their bonfire away. In Lewis and Guildford, it also became an occasion for adults to riot and shake the security felt by respectable householders through ritualised mayhem. The emancipation of Catholics in the 19th century saw the sectarian elements diminish in most parts of Britain. Firework displays became more formal and important to the event. Penny for the Guy would last into the second half of the 20th century as a regular tradition, but it's fallen out of favour since then. So what does the 5th of November mean today? The sectarian underbelly of the holiday has for the most part disappeared, with the holiday increasingly secularised and made into an event cut off from its dark origins. Bonfire night or fireworks night is often used as much as Guy Fawkes night to describe it. What was once a holiday celebrating the maintaining of power by elites has become a day tinged with the language of revolt and revolution. Towns like Lewis were not as wild as they used to be on this date, are still well known for their burning of effigies representing divisive political and cultural figures. Meanwhile, the fox mask of V from V for Vendetta has become an important political statement, although controversial. Gunpowder Treason Day, Guy Fawkes Night, Fireworks and Bonfire Night, whatever you call it, whatever you knew about it before now or had no clue about, and whether you celebrate it at a bonfire, firework display or home, remember, remember in all its forms the 5th of November, the weirdest holiday in Britain.